All right, guys, let's go through these uh, pneumatic trainers that we've got in the shop. So first thing we're going to start off with is uh, this guy right here. We've got the air coming in from the source, from the compressor. You can see that the maximum pressure today, so I can adjust the pressure by lifting this up until I see this orange tab, and then I can increase and decrease the pressure. The pressure today from the compressor, the max pressure, is a disgusting 100 PSI. So I'll just show you what 100 PSI is going to do to you. This valve right here, this ball valve, is going to either exhaust the air out of the system or it's going to supply the air to this manifold right here. Okay, so I've now turned that valve. I'm now supplying that pressure to this manifold and you can see that there's no air coming out of here because these guys are all check valves. You have to actually put into put the, the tubing, so we have this small tubing here that we can actually place in there. So what I also want to show you is uh, between this supplying the air and being turned off, if I have it halfway, then the air just flies out of this exhaust here. So there's really just two positions to this valve. This position and supplying the air to here. Anywhere between there, you're going to have air exhausting out of that portion. Okay, so now watch what happens when we put 100 PSI to this guy and then energize the circuit. Some of these are going to get a heart, right? 100 PSI is disgusting pressure. All we need for these guys is like 20 to 30 pounds of pressure. Okay, so we cranked her down to 30 PSI. Again, if I energize this, no air comes out of this manifold. If I then engage that tube, then that's going to tickle, but nobody's going to lose an eye. Okay, so don't be a donkey. Don't crank the uh, pressure up to 100 PSI. Somebody's going to get hurt. Uh, and all of your components are going to be wearing really fast. I'll know you're doing 100 PSI because I can hear it across the room. All of these components are then going to be smashing back and forth. Right? All of the relays are going to get smoked because um, you're putting an excessive amount of pressure and then you'll call me over and you say their labs aren't working. But that's because you've been a donkey and you put an excessive pressure to all of the components. Again, all we need is 20 to 30 PSI. Okay? The other components on this board um, are a selector switch. So a maintained selector switch. There are a number of push buttons here. And each of these components have the same as this below. So same as this limit switch here. It has a 3-2 valve. That 3-2 valve is also found on the back of each of these parts. Okay? These guys have an input on the left hand side and an output on the right hand side. This would correspond to port number one. This would correspond to port number two. If you take a closer look at the limit switches, they are the exact same as the 3-2s for the push buttons and the selector switch, but they have a direction of flow. So you can see, you might not be able to make it out right there, but there is an actual um, arrow here to denote that the air is coming in. So this would be port number one, this would be port number two, and then integral to the switch is port number three, which is the exhaust. What else have we got here? We've got three uh, actuators here. They're double acting actuators in that if we put air to here, they're going to extend. If we put air to the second port, then it's going to retract. Okay, there are limit switches here. I believe these guys are just read switches. And then we can connect those into our PLC later on. We have two indicator lamps. We have a green and a red. And as soon as we put pressure to any of those ports, then it's going to indicate by command. Okay, so you may want to use those when you're extending or retracting any of your <coughs> components. Let's show you how these guys are working as well. Put pressure to that double acting cylinder and it's going to extend. Oh. <laughs> Donkey, hang on. There we go, let's sleep at the wheel. There we go, it's going to extend. Okay, if we put it to the other side, it's going to obviously retract. Okay. Again, each of these guys has uh, an input. So this is the input here. And this is our input. If you end up putting it into the opposite port, then you'll hear this from your, from your program. That's meaning that air is going from port two 
the four three. So you've kind of misconnected it there. So it's exhausting out of the back. This is our input, this is our output. Put it into the wrong port, and you'll hear that on one of your components. Same thing goes for these limit switches, right? There it has your input here. We press this, air comes out of port number two. If we screw up and put it into the wrong port, it's exhausting out of three and doing it no good. Hey, what other components do we have here? Uh, in the back, there's a single port here where there's an air cylinder in the back. We're gonna make use of this guy and a flow control valve in order to make uh, a timer. And then in addition to that, we've got some relays here. So we have some pneumatic relays all the way up on the right hand side. All of these guys are 5-2 valves in that they have two positions to the, the switch and they've got five ports. One, two, three, four, and five. The three and five are on the bottom, those are the exhausts. Okay? In order to get this guy to change, I have to send a signal into this port here. So this is our initiating port, this is our supply, and these are our exhausts. We're going out to the field, right? So if we supply this guy with <coughs> air, then it looks like it's coming out of the right-hand port. That's because that supply is going out, out of here because this is our spring. So this is going to denote our rest position for this 5-2. If I want the air to come out of the other port, then I'm going to have to send a signal to that orange valve. So what we'll do is we'll just use a, a selector switch there in order to send that signal in there. Okay, so at rest, the spring is denoting our rest. That's our rest port right there. And then once I press this push button, it'll move to the other position and air will now come out of the other four. So it'll be cycling between two and four, depending on whether you're sending a signal into this five, two. This one here we can make use of later on with the PLC, so we can use a 24 volt relay to turn that guy on, spring return, or later on with our pneumatics, we're gonna make use of uh, two initiating ports here. This port controls the air going from one to two, this port then controls the air going from one to four. So we can go back and forth with these guys with the corresponding signals for each of them. Okay, we have a number of them all the way through. Sometimes there's, again, there's some donkeys who are using 100 PSI. Uh, so some of these five twos will jam. So all you need to do is actually put some back pressure on the, on the exhaust, and then it should, uh, should cycle through. Remember that these ones will stay in their position. In, in that this one has a spring to always return the air to this port. These guys will stay there for weeks and months until the next signal comes in. So if that was your last signal, and you come back the next day, air will go from here to here. If your last signal of your lab came into this port, well then, when you come back the next day, air will go from here to here. Okay, what else do we got? I think that's basically it. Right? We've covered our supply here, manifold with some check valves, indicator lights, selector switch that's maintained, momentary push buttons, 5-2 relays, either pneumatically operated or operated with 24 volt DC. Behind here, there's a, an air tank that we can use for our timers. And then we have some limit switches, which are pneumatic. We have some read switch, limit switches to see our travel, and we can pick those guys up. Uh, the polarity on these guys is brown is the positive, blue is the negative. And then aside from that, we've got three double acting cylinders that we can make use of. In addition to that, you're gonna have your hose, your hose that you're going to use for each of these guys. And I'm gonna supply you guys with a tackle box here. The tackle box is gonna make, gonna give you a single acting cylinder, some T's, so the T's come in different forms here. Uh, a flow control valve, a one-way flow control valve some plugs in, the, in case we need to plug off any of our uh, outputs. And then you'll also have uh, an AND valve and an OR valve. And the way that you distinguish between these guys is that embossed on the front face, uh, you'll have the actual symbols that we were looking at. You know. 
looking at it in class for the OR or the ENDO. Okay? The single acting cylinder we're going to get to in the first lab, right? Single port. Once we put air to this guy, it's going to extend this, and there's a spring to have it retract. Alright guys, that covers everything. Flip over to the next lab and next video and it's gonna show you lab number one.